My daughter encourages my wife to divorce me and go with a fair. I planned revenge for both of them. Life is full of ups and downs, mostly the down. It's funny how men are taught to be strong and tough, and yet when you decide to unleash your toughness, society will call you a heartless man. I know a lot of people are going to judge, but I'm still going to share my story so that no man out there will ever have to go through what I went through. I don't even know where to start my story from. My daughter encouraged my wife to divorce me and move on with her lover, but I made sure I dealt with both of them. I planned a big revenge for them. I actually got the last laugh. Can you imagine your own daughter and only child standing against you and supporting her mother to divorce you? Have you ever experienced such a horrible situation? Well, I have, and I can tell you it's a bad place to be in. But I'm glad I didn't let my wife and daughter ruin my life. Instead, I ruined theirs. I know a lot of you keypad warriors will call me a heartless man, but I honestly don't care. Wait till you experienced half of what I want through before you call me names. For the sake of privacy and my desire to not reveal my identity, I will be using fake names. My name is Stanley. I'm a 40-year-old pilot and my wife's name is Annabelle and she is 35 years old. Annabelle and I got married 15 years ago and our marriage is blessed with a daughter, Stacy, who is 14 years old. Annabelle and I met 20 years ago in our first year in college. It wasn't love at first sight because Annabelle was my then girlfriend's friend. My then girlfriend cheated on me, not that I caught her though, it was Annabelle that told me about it. I didn't confront my then girlfriend, I just broke up with her. That's how me and Annabelle began dating. I wanted to get back at my then girlfriend so bad for cheating on me, so I was using Annabelle to achieve that. That was how Annabelle got pregnant in our final year in college and I was forced to marry her. Although she claimed she lost the baby one month after our wedding, I never believed her. I wasn't convinced. Something tells me she was never pregnant to begin and that the whole pregnancy was a sham. I'm sure she did all that to trap me. But over the years, I grew to love her. All through our marriage, I was there for her, physically, emotionally, and in all aspects, despite my busy schedules. I made sure she never lacked anything. When she gave birth to our daughter, Stacy, I opened a big jewelry store for her. I bought most of our properties in my wife's and daughter's name, big mistake. Stacy, our daughter, was always close with Annabelle. I know a lot of people always say daughters are daddy's girls, but in my case, it wasn't. Stacy was closer to her mother than me. And no, it wasn't because I wasn't always around. Despite my busy schedules, I still made sure I had time for my family. I create time for them. We go out for fun activities almost every week, but I noticed Stacy preferred her mom's company than mine. Initially, I thought it was adolescent shenanigans, but I was wrong. I'm a loving person, but also very strict. I loved my daughter so much, but I was very strict with her. I made sure she wore age-appropriate clothes, limiting her screen time so she could concentrate on her schoolwork and physical activities. But Annabelle, on the other hand, was the opposite. Annabelle single-handedly spoiled our little girl. Exposing her to a lot of things like adult magazines, unlike me, Annabelle allows her to dress how she pleases, allowing her much screen time. So she preferred her mom to me and always looked forward to days when I won't be home so she could have utmost freedom. I still don't understand why Annabelle overpampered our daughter. She was always trying to be on her good side. Each time I questioned her on why she is spoiling Stacy too much. She always said Stacy was her only child. That was how our daughter became an unruly teenager. All through our 15 years of marriage, I never suspected Annabelle was cheating on me. In fact, we made a promise to each other 10 years ago on our anniversary that we will never cheat on each other and that we will make our marriage work. So I never imagined that Annabelle would ever cheat on me. I started noticing things were off six months ago, so I took a one month leave from work. I wanted to understand what was happening in my home and honestly, I'm glad I listened to my instincts and took that leave. I started suspecting Annabelle six months ago when I returned from a trip unannounced. It was supposed to be a one month trip, but was cut short due to some unforeseen issues. I arrived to meet an empty home. I wanted to surprise my wife and daughter, but unfortunately I was the one that got surprised. I didn't meet anyone at home when I arrived. I waited till in the evening before making any move because I initially thought they went out for groceries shopping or they were out for fun. After waiting for hours without any sight of them, I called Annabelle and pretended like I was still on my trip. I asked if she was at home and she said yes. I requested we do a video call because I wanted to see our daughter. She told me our daughter was already asleep in her room and she wouldn't want to disturb her. It was at that point I started suspecting her. I told her I would love to see her face as I have missed her a lot. At that point, Annabelle flared up and started questioning whether I was doubting her. She became defensive. I told her I was at home and wanted to surprise her and Stacy. It was then she told me she was at her parents' place and didn't want to bother about it. She sounded dumb. I knew she was lying, but I played along. 
The following morning, she came as early as 6 a.m. It was at that point my suspicion grew. We stay in Los Angeles and her parents stay in Chicago, so I was shocked at how fast she arrived the following day. She apologized for not informing me about going to her parents' place earlier, and I acted as if I was over it. I took leave of work so I could get to the bottom of everything. One day, while Annabelle was deep asleep, I looked through her phone and discovered her messages folder and WhatsApp messages were empty. I found it unbelievable because the Annabelle I know was always on her phone. Since I couldn't get anything from her phone, I hired some private detective to follow her and report to me. That was how I got to find out about the woman I was married to. The private detective always reports her movements. Every day Annabelle will dress up and tell me she was going to her jewelry store, but the private detective she went to a hotel with proofs. She was always changing hotels every day, expensive hotels. After putting all my findings together, I discovered my beloved wife was cheating on me. Not with one person, but with numerous guys. I was shocked and hurt at first, but after some time I decided to count my losses and just move on. The worst part of this betrayal was that my little daughter Stacy was involved. She usually takes her along on most of this visit to the hotels. While she is busy in the hotels with her boyfriend, Stacy will be at the reception waiting for her. I was so mad at her for exposing our little girl to such a lifestyle at an early age, but I decided to keep calm. I wanted to have enough evidence before doing anything. I also found out she spends my money on these guys. Most of them are jobless guys roaming the street. Most of them are even young enough to be her son. I was so hurt and angry at the same time. I can't believe the woman I have done so much for would turn back to hurt me this much. It was at that point I started regretting everything. I regretted ever marrying the gold dinging. I never imagined Annabelle would pay me back like this after picking her up from poverty and paying most of her school loans to establish her and make her who she is today. I decided to pay her back in her own coin. I started plotting my revenge. One day I told Annabelle I was going on a one month trip. She acted sad as usual and told me she was going to miss me, but they were all lies. I left the house and checked into a hotel nearby. I asked the private detectives to continue watching the house and alert me of any suspicion. It didn't take long, guys. Update. <coughs> Hi guys, I'm back to update you guys on how everything went down. Two days after I left the house, the private detectives I hired informed me there was a young man at my home. I waited till the following day to make sure my daughter was in school before storming the house. Meanwhile, I forgot to mention to you guys that I secretly installed CCTV camera in our living room and bedroom. While in my hotel room, I was monitoring what was happening when I saw my wife and her lover were already naked and intimate. It was then I stormed the house. Annabelle was shocked when I arrived. She had to clean her eyes three times. Maybe she thought she was dreaming. She jumped up and started shedding crocodile tears. She told me she could explain and that I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Women are funny. She must really take me for a fool. While Annabelle was busy pleading, her lover boy quickly wore his clothes and tried to escape, but unfortunately for him, I caught him and gave him a beating he would never forget in his lifetime. As for Annabelle, I gave her three dirty slaps. I pushed her out and threw her things out. The only thing I was saying at that point was why. I kept asking why until she finally opened her mouth to talk. She told me it was loneliness that pushed her into having an affair since I wasn't around. She opened her stupid mouth to tell me she got bored at a point that is why she cheated. I was perplexed, guys. Even though I was always not around, I made sure we communicated three times a day despite my busy schedules. I made sure to always be at home and spend time with my family whenever my job permits. I was working for her and our daughter to be comfortable and she was busy spending the money on random guys. At that point, I didn't even know how to react. I honestly didn't know what to do. I was boiling inside yet so calm. I didn't even know where the strength came from. I went inside, brought out all the designer clothes, shoes and bags I bought for her and burnt everything. Even the one she bought for herself, I burnt everything to ashes. Her cry became louder when she saw her valuables burning into flames. The more she cried, the more I felt relieved. She knelt down and started pleading for mercy that this is the first time she was cheating on me, but I told her it was late. I told her I started suspecting her from the day I came back home and she wasn't at home, but lied that she was at her parents' place in Chicago just to arrive early in the morning the following day. I told her everything from hiring private detectives to follow her around to secretly installing CCTV cameras in our living room and bedroom. She was shocked to hear all these. In fact, she was too stunned to even utter a word. I was so furious that I almost started hitting her, but I held myself back. Honestly, it hurts. How can my so-called wife be cheating and spending my hard-earned money on little boys while I'm outside hustling for our daily bread? Not just that she even had the audacity to bring one of those low lives to our home and sleep with him on our matrimonial bed. That was the height for me. 
I asked her to leave and never show her face in my house ever again. She stayed outside crying and begging until our daughter Stacy arrived. She narrated everything to her and Stacy started advising her mother to divorce me and take half of my properties so she could move on living her best life with her lover. I was surprised, guys. I couldn't believe my ears. I came out to meet them and asked her to repeat what she said and she audibly repeated it. I was shocked to hear that from a 14-year-old. Stacy told me I never loved her and she is never free to be herself whenever I'm around. She told me she is not proud of me as a father. I was too stunned to speak. It still stings up till this day hearing that from my own child. I never knew Stacy had become that disrespectful. I always excuse her tantrums for puberty, but seeing how talked to me that day made me realize my little girl was gone. I mean, I couldn't even recognize the person that was standing in front of me talking. I couldn't believe my eyes. How can a 14 year old be spilling such nonsense? She even went as far as telling me that I was good for nothing and that fact that her mom deserves better and I wasn't good for her. She said I was too rigid for her liking and that I wasn't as cool as her mom. For a moment, I wanted the ground to open so it could just swallow me up. How can the daughter I love so much be talking to me in this manner? It felt ganged up. She told her mom to stop crying and just divorce me so she could continue enjoying her life with her lover. Annabelle and Stacy parked their stuff from my house and left. It was at that point I made up my mind to teach the two of them a story. The following day, I sent divorce papers through my lawyer to Annabelle. My lawyer was skeptical about the divorce because all my properties were bought in Annabelle and Stacy's name, but I assured him I had a good plan in motion. Annabelle called me after receiving the divorce papers and told me she was ready for the divorce. Soon the divorce proceedings started and it wasn't as I anticipated, but I refused to be distracted. The whole process wasn't seamless like I had imagined, but everything was worth it as our divorce was later finalized. Annabelle got almost everything and we both got joint custody of our daughter. But I told Annabelle I wasn't interested in raising Stacy any longer since she is already doing a good job at that. The day we got divorced, Stacy was the most excited. She told me she was finally free from my unnecessary nagging. I don't blame her though, if only she knew what I had planned out for her and her mother. That is guys. That was how I lost my family and all the things I have worked for for years. After the divorce, I started with my plans to make Annabelle and Stacy cry. I made a plan with a young friend of mine, Alexander. Knowing how shameless Annabelle was, I knew she would fall for his tricks. He disguised himself as a realtor and a very rich young man. I gave him all the necessary information he needed about Annabelle, where he could meet her and how he should woo her, and as expected, Annabelle fell for his trick. They started having an affair. Annabelle fell head over heels for him because unlike her previous lover, Alexander was rich. Alexander was spending money on her, taking her shopping and going on expensive trips for two months. Annabelle felt safe and at that point we struck. I drafted a business proposal about investing in real estate which Alexander took to Annabelle. Unfortunately for us, she fell into our trap. The deal was very cheap. Only a greedy person would fall for that and Annabelle being Annabelle fell for it. She put all the properties she got from me up for sale at a cheaper price and through the help of my lawyers, I was able to purchase it without her knowing. That was how I got all my properties back for peanuts. Annabelle was desperate for money, so she sold off everything very cheap down to her jewelry store. I acquired everything and continued with my plans. So Annabelle sold off everything and gave Alexander the money. That was how she lost everything. She even borrowed some money so could make up for the amount requested for the investment. Alexander brought the money to me as agreed. I paid him off, that was it. That was the beginning of Annabelle's downfall. It was a grace to grace situation. That was how I got everything I lost back with even some free money. It felt good to finally give them a taste of their own medicine. That was the beginning of their nightmares. Annabelle soon became a shadow of herself. She tried calling me once and I blocked her number. Stacy also started calling me out of nowhere. This is someone that never called me before. I blocked her number also. They soon became homeless because they could no longer afford to pay for rent. Can you imagine living in a luxurious mansion to living in a rented apartment and to no longer not being able to pay rent? It was at that point Annabelle and Stacy came back to beg me. I can't still remember that day vividly. I was shocked to see them, but I wasn't surprised. They both knelt down and asked for my forgiveness, but I refused and sent them away. I decided to go into the next stage of my plans. I hacked into Annabelle's Facebook account through the help of a friend and uploaded her numerous cheating videos I was able to get from the CCTV camera I secretly installed. Our close friends and family abused her to the point she had to deactivate her social media account. Some of them who weren't aware about our divorce called to sympathize with me for marrying such a public disgrace. 
Honestly, I felt good subjecting her to such embarrassment. She was so ashamed she couldn't move outside for days. With her nude pictures flying online, no job and no money to pay rent, she moved in to go squat with her friend. Not just that, I stopped giving her parents the upkeep money I usually give them every month. I stopped sponsoring the brother in Harvard and I chased the parents out of the house I bought for them. I know a lot of you will say I'm heartless, but I don't care. Only I understand what I went through. Only I know what I invested in Annabelle and I family. How I worked my ass off so she could be comfortable. How I gave her and our daughter the very best, but what did I get in return? Betrayal. So I don't care about anything you guys have to say. I wished I listened to my parents when they asked me not to give in to pressure and marry Annabelle when she claimed she was pregnant and was pressuring me for marriage. Annabelle and her parents pressured me to the extent I had to give in and marry her despite my parents' refusal. My parents were never in support of our union, but for my sake, they had to adjust to the fact that Annabelle was my wife. Initially, I thought they were against the marriage because Annabelle wasn't in the same social class as us, but they told me there's something about Annabelle that was off and the fact that people like her are gold diggers. I wished I listened to them honestly. My mom especially had her reservation after she saw our Annabelle was shopping for the most expensive accessories during our wedding. My parents sponsored our wedding. Annabelle took that liberty and ordered all the expensive stuff. I felt embarrassed, but I never read the meaning into it. I thought she was just excited to finally get married. The whole greediness continued into our marriage, but since I could provide, I never complained about it. Yeah. Looking back right now, I think I made the most sacrifice in our marriage. Annabelle never loved me. To her, I was just a ladder she needed to get up and I'm glad I sent her back to the slum where she belongs. It was after my divorce that I found out the truth about my then girlfriend in college. She was my first love, my best friend and everything. I found out she never cheated on me and in fact, Annabelle planned the whole thing. Even the pregnancy was fake, she was never pregnant. At that point, I felt used, but I'm happy I taught her a lesson she would never forget in her lifetime. Although I found out the truth late, I'm still glad I finally got to know the truth. As for Stacy, my daughter, I couldn't just look away. She was still my daughter anyways. I took responsibility for her education, but I made sure she stayed with her mom. I withdrew her from the expensive private school she was attending and enrolled her in a public school. I wanted to teach her a lesson. I stopped giving her pocket money after my divorce with mom. I also took her phones and gadgets and told her she would only have access to those things when she finally graduates from the top of her class. I also took away all the privileges she enjoyed before. No outing, just school, no social activities, no shopping. I told her I would completely withdraw any form of support from her if I didn't see any substantial changes after six months. That was how I started seeing some changes in her. One day she begged me to please allow her to come and stay with me as she wasn't comfortable living in a shared apartment with her mom and her mom's friend. She told me she is not used to such a lifestyle and she is finding it hard to adjust. I told her it wasn't possible and that she would soon get used to it. It was my way of teaching her that the grass isn't always greener on the other side and that all that glitters isn't always gold. That is my story, guys. I hope someone out there learns something from my story. Don't be too soft as a man and most importantly, avoid getting married to a gold digger as a wife. They will ruin your life.